Welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show News Talk, 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. Joining us right now on the phones, it's State Representative uh, John Frulo. Good morning, sir. How are you? Well, good morning, Chad, and happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's uh, got to be an exciting time for you. It, well, it is, and it's also Friday. It's Friday the 13th, so that's <laughs> it, it's going to be fun, I think. Well, maybe if you were born on the 13th, that'll explain a lot. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, we have a uh, an election coming up that uh, I, I, it's gotten some press, but it, it's one. Of, it's a constitutional amendment election. It's it's one of those that uh, it just it, it not a lot of people probably know uh, what they're going to be voting for if they actually go and vote uh, in the upcoming election. Right. And so uh, that's why we we're glad to have you on today to uh, talk about these uh, different uh, constitutional amendments. And, and I, I guess we can uh, start off with just uh, the first one. There are uh, just a, uh, a few of these that are on there. What I think a total of seven. Right. There's seven constitutional amendments that are uh, on the ballot this time. So uh, tell us about the, uh, the the first one, Proposition One. You know, that's a pretty, uh, uh, I think, uh, easy one for pretty much everybody to vote for. It's, a, I would say, a cleanup uh, for disabled veterans' proper, property tax relief. And what it does is it, uh, it an, under current law, a disabled veteran or surviving spouse is able to uh, receive property tax if the entire home is donated to them. But uh, uh, this proposition one what it does it extends that to disabled veterans or surviving spouses if only a portion of that house was donated and you know so an assumption is there's you know if they're giving you half the house is some a group you know, like uh, uh, homes for heroes here uh, is, a, is is a neat program that we've seen with the West Texas uh, Home Builders Association putting together, and I've uh, you know been able to go out there and see a lot of these the presentations, and just really neat to uh, see what, what the community uh, on a private level is doing. Uh, well, if you give them the whole house, the the, the veteran or the spouse, uh, th- that's tax deducted. There's no tax on that. What this does is say if there's a portion of the home that is uh, contributed or donated, then you should pro rata have a reduction in that property tax. So you know it's a it's a, 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 a way to honor our veterans and help them out. You know those that have given so much and their families who have given so much to us to give back to them. Yeah, very good. Proposition number two. That's, uh, you know, kind of one of the most uh, hard-to-read and worded uh, propositions that uh, I think, you know, it shows that attorneys are involved in the process. Um, you get done reading and you kind of wonder what, what does it mean. And what it does is it just makes a number of changes to home equity loans where it gives options to borrowers back in the late, uh, I think maybe it's like 97 or so, 1997. Texas was the last uh, state to allow home equity loans. You know, you know, Texas has great provisions to protect uh, people and their homes from being taken away. Uh, you know, for a number of reasons other than just paying the mortgage, uh, and it keeps people from being able to get that. As you open that up, uh, the problem with that was is it didn't allow people the opportunity to access the value of their home. If they paid a lot of money down, then they have a reason where they need to maybe get some of that money back and borrow against their home, or if their home is just drastically appreciated in value, which, you know, a lot of folks have, there, there's no way to really tap that value other than to have sold the home and so they went through that process. Now they're saying, Let, let's open up a couple of other avenues. Uh, let's change the way some of those fees are tallied in that process and make it to where homeowners basically have more options to, uh, you know, handle their assets, take care of their assets. And uh, I think it's it's a good free market type item. Uh, is there a downside to it? Yes. If you don't make your payments, if you have a large drop in value, have to sell your house, you have all those same items that you would have had anyhow. But at the end of the day, it's uh, I think it's a good way for people to access the value of their home. Uh, we're talking about the uh, Texas Constitutional Amendments, the election coming up on November 7th. Uh, we were visiting with State Representative John Frulo this morning. Uh, another uh, proposition, this one, uh, not a real long one when you look at the language of it, proposition number three. 
Well, it, it, it's not a real long one, and it's one of those that really doesn't do a lot. But it, it's a, <laughs> you know, it's a, which is unusual for government. But you know, it, it's a start in the process. And what happens is uh, the governor appoints people. Uh, two positions, and then those positions run out. Sometimes they tend to just to stay in there if they're not reappointed. What this does is it starts an avenue for uh, saying that the governor, governor has to either reappoint them or that seat goes vacant. And, and so it ensures that those seats are filled by uh, people, those boards are filled uh, by people that are actually conducting the business of the state. So, you know, there's probably a lot of work that needs to be done in that area as far as just that, how the whole process works. But it, it's a start, and, uh, you know, I think it's a good start. So we'll, we'll see how that works out and ends up going. Uh, what about Proposition number 4? Proposition 4 has to do more of a, a lawyer-type thing, and uh, what it does is it helps the attorney general if uh, somebody is saying that we have uh, provisions of the law that are unconstitutional. It uh, gives a period of about 45 days where the courts have to let the AG know, who, of course, was in town here just a little while ago, had the uh, pleasure to visit with uh, Ken and uh, you know, speak to the folks out at SPAG. Um, you know, doing a great job defending our uh, state, and uh, you know, re- people get a chance to hear him that really need to listen to some of the things he has to say and wh- how he's protecting our rights. But this just gives our uh, top law enforcement officer, the attorney general, uh, the ability to know that hey, the constitutionality is being challenged, and uh, lets him go and defend that. So I think I think that's a, a great uh, you know great way uh, to. You know, but at least let people know what's happening, what's going on. Yeah. Uh, Another one, uh, another short one dealing with sports teams. It's uh, Proposition Number 5. Proposition 5, what it does is, as you said, it's uh, for the sports team, charitable foundations. And back in uh, 2015, uh, there was a constitutional amendment, and the voters uh, statewide voted for it, uh, roughly about 70 to 30 percent in favor of it. Uh, Lubbock County was actually a little bit less. They were uh, 57-43, so uh, a little bit less. What it does is it expanded what happened, what the uh, the state voted for in 2015 to other teams. Basically, in 2015, you could have charitable auctions, uh, and not really auctions, uh, raffles, I guess is what they're they're calling them, where yeah. they could sell tickets. And people that have been to, you know, these different games, uh, so let's, let's say, for example, the Texas Rangers, uh, they can go there and, and buy these little raffle tickets for so long, either through kiosks or people running around selling them. And and then half that money goes to for that for example the Texas Rangers to their foundation and the other half goes to charities in the the region and so you know it's a good way to raise some money for good charities and uh, it, it worked out well with those big major teams that were basically just in Houston Dallas and San Antonio and what this does is it keeps all the provisions in there the safeguards that we had in that law in 2015 but expands it to uh, you know my minor league teams, uh, you know, minor league baseball teams, and I think probably about another 15 or 20 cities will actually have the ability to sell raffle tickets and generate money for local charities. That's right. Well, and, and the uh, uh, where I've seen it, where I've seen it done, whether it's uh, here in Texas or elsewhere, uh, people get a kick out of it, and it's 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 great for uh, uh, those nonprofit organizations as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a win-win deal. It's people aren't putting money into anything that they. Uh, uh, you know, don't want to put money into the hot and, dogs cost more than the tickets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, you have you have a chance to win. I think it's just sort of a fun thing. And plus, at the end of the day, you're helping a a, a charity out. So there's there's you know, and they're typically good charities, uh, the ones I've seen. So it's 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 pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, very good. Uh, proposition number six. Six is uh, you know somewhat similar to the first one we talked about. It's uh, an exemption for ad valorem for all the part of the market value of a residence for a surviving spouse or first responder who was uh, uh, killed or fatally injured in the line of duty. And of course, that hits home unfortunately here in Lubbock with what we've seen un- unfold this week. Um, and so it's a way to, again to help out those folks who have given so much to us, protecting us. 
Yeah. Yeah, I think that, that much like the first one's pretty much just a no-brainer that, uh, uh, you know, and with all these constitutional amendments, even the ones that just make so much sense and give, you know, help people that really need help, uh, we'll still probably see uh, 15, 17 percent of the people voting against them. Right. You know, and I think those are pretty much typically, in this case, it would be just uninformed people. They're just, they're against everything. And it's, you know, I wish I'd listen to your show and go out there, read this, look at my newsletter. I sent out a newsletter. It's, um, um, I believe it's online, too. But it, it talks about the constitutional amendments, gives gives some information about them. It uh, goes through what supporters say and what opponents say about uh, different items and uh, uh, just gets people more informed. You know, And then, of course, they just need to vote. Vote and be informed. Go out and vote, whether it's this election or any other election. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have one more to get to, right? Right. Yep. Okay, yep. seven. Number seven. So seven's kind of a fun one. And, and what it is is uh, basically... Uh, you know, it kind of reminds me of the old toaster. Banks uh, used to give out toasters when you opened up a bank account. Uh, um, and, and what this does is uh, people will put in money, they'll put it into savings accounts, and then the the, the bank or the banking organization will uh, have uh, like a, a raffle, if you will. Although it's not really a raffle, it's more of a giveaway where people can actually win money for starting a savings account. And, and so it, uh, the reason I say it's not really a raffle, and there's even a question of whether or not we need a constitutional amendment to do this, um, is you, you go down and you put in $100 into a savings account, and then you become eligible, depending on you know if the financial institution that you're dealing with participates in this. And then you have a chance to possibly win something. Uh, you know, so let's say you put in a hundred dollars, you start that savings program, and they have the raffle, and you don't uh, win. Well, what what are you out? Nothing. Right. You still have your hundred dollars plus some interest sitting in that account, and, and so there's really not a downside. It's just a chance to encourage people to uh, save. What they, we have seen in other countries is the people that are doing this are starting to actually save money. You know, something that we want. We've got terrible uh, survive, uh, uh, savings rates in this country. People don't save, and so what we're seeing is a lot of uh, folks, especially people that have never had savings account, are starting to open this up with the opportunity to win a little bit of money. And uh, what we're seeing in those other countries is that amount is building and people are actually learning the value. Uh, you've seen it. Of course, you've been down to um, Austin. You've, you've watched the workings down there. Some of the biggest arguments we have is what are we going to be doing as state legislators uh, with the rainy day account that we have right. and how we spend the, money, the state's savings account. And that's a big deal. Well, a lot of people don't even have that. So what do you do when your car breaks down? It's a way to have people put money aside and, you know, when that alternator quits working instead of, uh, if you don't have money, instead of walking, trying to figure out how to get a ride or, you know, going to a high interest rate place, they'll have that money possibly in that account that they can use. So it's, it's kind of a good deal, it's sort of a, a fun deal. And again, one of those things that, uh, you know, if you don't like it, don't participate. But, uh, you know, I, th I think it is a good deal to give other folks a chance to participate in that program. Very good. Uh, visit with Representative John Frulo. Before we let you go, uh, as you know, you know the, the Gun and Blade Show is uh, here in Lubbock. And since you authored the knife bill, will you be attending the Gun and Blade Show? And will you be wearing a sword or saber now that you can do that? Yeah, uh, yeah I'm probably uh, somewhat of a, a hero status there between the bill I passed last session session and the one I passed this session, uh, removing restrictions on knives and, then, of course, even further removing the restrictions this session to where uh, you can do it. No, I, I do not own a sword. I own uh, a ton of knives and, of course, guns, but uh, no sword. So I, won't I think not, you need uh, a sword. I, I will not strap on a sword. Uh, but, uh, you know, people can now strap on a Bowie knife, uh, you know, that uh, is so famous in the state of Texas that up until the time that uh, a bill that I altered passed, you could not carry one unless... It was in your home, your motor vehicle, uh, you know, or you were in transport. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's a good thing. It makes a lot of sense. It removes a lot of confusing laws. And then it still keeps the uh, school zones and places like that, executions, uh, courtrooms, uh, you know, 
the same provisions that they had before, but at least walking down the street, uh, again, you can you can carry that knife. And, you know, I'll tell you, I've never done so many interviews with uh, uh, major, you know, nationwide news outlets as on that one particular bill, whether it was a CNN, Fox, uh you know, the New York Times, Washington Post, all those, they wanted to know what was going on, why we were doing that's going to be the Wild West. And it's like, no, it's not. It'll, it's, it'll uh, be fine. It makes sense, exactly. Representative Frulo, as always, appreciate your time today, and uh, we'll talk with you later on. Well, thank you, and enjoy this special day. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ed.